and thank you for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide, working together to learn the charts, generate profits, and achieve financial independence. Join us for live daily chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chart community, and access exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Now, let's check out some charts. Well, that was in response to a lot of people who didn't like the new intro, so we got Christopher Walken to, to do the new intro for us. So I hope that was enjoyable. Happy Sunday, everybody. We're going to look at the commodities here. And if you've been watching these videos that I update each weekend, we're looking on longer term time frames as that's where I feel the clarity in these patterns lies. And I'm waiting for these longer term patterns to break before I get active in the crypto or in the commodity space. So I've been very active in the marijuana sector, doing some day trading of some other regular stocks also trading cryptocurrency, and I feel that the commodity space is going to be a target in the second half of 2019 for spikes in volatility once we break these monthly ranges that we're watching. So I am waiting until then personally to move to that sector and capitalize on that volatility and opportunity as it arrives, and that has been my trading style for the past however many years. Wait for the volatility and the hype market to come around and then play it. So looking at DXY, the dollar on the monthly time frame is in a tightening range where we have our double top that we hit at 97.71 and our support maintaining the monthly uptrend is 95.03. If gold bulls are going to get any significant upside, in my opinion, the dollar is going to have to break 95.03. If we see a clear break for the bulls over the double top at 97.71 and get monthly continuation of the uptrend, which has been in play for the last, oh, 16 months then that's going to be bearish for gold in the short term. So tightening range, we've been within this range for the last six months essentially, and we're patiently waiting. So the weekly time frame, we can see we have a bit of an uptrend, but even if we lose that support level of 95.74, it's not game over. It would increase the odds significantly that we will lose that monthly support, but at that point, it would only be a bear break of the weekly uptrend. And I'm watching this little weekly time frame. If you want to zoom in and act on shorter term time frames, we got our high, low of the pullback, lower high was 97.52. And we're now looking for the dollar to set a higher low compared to 95.74 and stay in this tightening weekly range. So we have a six month tightening range and we have a six week tightening range. The weekly range will certainly break before the monthly range and shift the odds of what is most likely on the monthly scenario. So looking at gold and how it's shaping up as well, we know we have a long drawn out many year, multiple year equilibrium on the monthly time frame. Higher low was 122.51, almost a double top at 1365, another higher low at 1160, a lower high at 1347, and now we're looking for a monthly higher low to form. <clears throat> if the bulls hold 1280, it is certainly going to favor the bulls in this monthly pattern because it'll be much closer to a resistance break than it would be to a support break. Where we stand right now, we're $57 from a resistance break, yet we are $130 from a support break. So that certainly favors the bulls overall. That being said, if the dollar were to break that monthly chart bullish, that would be a scenario, in my opinion, where the gold bulls are going to have to form a higher low, but they're probably going to do so in the mid to lower $1,200 range, depending on how strong that dollar breakout is. If the dollar loses the monthly uptrend, then we're going to increase the odds that gold bulls are going to break this pattern bullish after a bull flag. This is still a bull flag on the monthly time frame, in my opinion, and how this weekly pattern breaks is going to shift those odds. So same as the dollar, we've been in a tightening range here on gold even longer, eight weeks now. High, low, lower high, higher low. Looks like we just set a lower high at 13.10. And even when you zoom in on the daily time frame, it was a descending triangle pattern that we've been keeping an eye on with a horizontal base of support down at 12.80 and clear lower highs of resistance as the range tightens. So we're heading down to see can the bulls hold 12.80 this coming week if they can. Anything under 13.10 will just be a lower high staying in this tightening range. But we are patiently waiting for a break of the weekly time frames to shift the odds of the monthly time frames. So we're looking for a break in gold, I'd say probably sometime in the next two weeks and same for the dollar. 
So GDX, we have a tightening range, high, low, lower, high, higher, low was set at 2179. If we break 2179, we're looking down at 2140 as the key level. This is the weekly time frame, and that would give us our monthly further consolidation if that does break. So the weekly patterns are the most important short term for all these names. And for GDX, it's weaker, or I should say GDXJ, that has consistently been the case, weaker than GDX, high, low, lower, high, already came down and hit this support and actually broke it by a couple pennies and heading down for potential further consolidation. So if you are actively trading the minor space and you've been doing so for a long time, that's great, you've got your game plan. But for people like me that bounce around to sectors at all different times, patiently waiting for these patterns to break is best in my opinion, because again, while we're within tightening ranges, the action is more choppy. There's less percentage moves before we see those tightening restricting ranges and waiting for the longer term patterns to break. It's the kind of scenario where if you're looking at a multiple year pattern playing out on the monthly time frame, when that break does occur, you're going to anticipate multiple months of follow through. So I may even take a swing trading perspective in the commodity space based on how these patterns do end up playing out. Oil. So I'm still watching the monthly chart on oil and we're looking for an equilibrium still. We know the market and oil have been trading hand in hand, but at this point, the market, if oil were literally tick for tick with the market, we'd be up in the $75 range right now on oil. So the fact that we are not tells me that a lower high is still most likely compared to 76. And we would have to see a 20% move even to get up to that resistance from where we stand. So I am anticipating that we are going to form a monthly lower high compared to 76.88 and form a monthly equilibrium. We have no sign that our top is being set just yet, but I take the longer term perspective and say, okay, this is what's most likely to happen. And then I zoom in and look for signals that it is indeed happening. Weekly time frames a bit extended with five green weeks in a row. The daily chart a bit extended with the strength of that move, but we still have the uptrend. So at this point, the only bearish play is top fishing 6477. That would be, you know, trying to time the top and get a little bit lucky. The reward would be big if you were right, but the risk would be small as you would stop out if we see continuation. The odds of getting stopped out are just pretty high. So either that is the one bear play to be looking for. The other one, we're watching the daily higher low of 6179. Anything above that level maintains the daily uptrend and waiting for a loss of the daily uptrend could be a potential signal of our monthly lower high being set. So that would be a little bit of a less risk, less reward scenario being more patient or waiting for the weekly uptrend to be lost, which is not happening anytime soon. We know that the next time we consolidate on the weekly, we are going to establish a higher low compared to 5450. And that would be even less risk and even less reward. So it all depends on how aggressive you wanna be looking for a monthly lower high in oil with how you would set up your trade game plan based off of that. But I am going to be looking for this monthly lower high to potentially indicate when weekly consolidation is going to be coming in the market and the S&P 500, which has been so strong. Natural gas is still very weak. We are watching for the potential of this weekly chart setting a higher low. And the fact that the four hour time frame did not break that 272 resistance level, which is now a triple top essentially, the fact that that resistance did not break told me that we can't be confident this weekly higher low is set. We needed some bounce follow through and we just didn't get it. So support is down at 2624 and 2571. We have no signs of a weekly trend change at this point and we're heading down towards that 2624 support level. We're not oversold on the daily. The four hour RSI is not oversold. So we are still in full control of the bears with no sign of that shifting. And again, I'm waiting for a longer term weekly trend change now that we've been in a downtrend on the weekly chart for months and months need to see that weekly trend change for a clear shift in momentum. So bottom line for me is patiently waiting on weekly patterns to break to give us the odds of what's likely to happen in the monthly timeframes and waiting for those monthly patterns to break sometime later this year to potentially spark a big uptick in the activity in the commodity space. I appreciate you watching. We'll keep checking in. See you Monday. So picking up adventure time, back five years ago when I was in Costa Rica. It's Friday, so we've got a Sour Brown from New Belgian Brewery in town. So at nighttime in Costa Rica, all the creatures would come out. And from the last video, you could see that the spot we were staying in was very exposed to the elements. So the bugs and the critters were always coming inside. 
and it was not uncommon to have a scorpion in the bedroom or a crab in the kitchen. And the bugs at night would come and be attracted to any lights we had on. So the geckos would all hang out around the lights and they would just feast on all the flies and the bugs that would land near the lights. So that was fun to just watch every night. Some more different little iguana guys. Dan in the beach. Cowboy wondering what's going on. Baloo. Very comfortable with her new guardians. And just more incredible beach sunset. There was a moment where we were floating in the water and the sun was looking like that. And I said, if life is a trip, I'm peaking right now. And that's pretty much how I felt in terms of just perfection, alignment of everything. And someone posted on the other video, you know, the fact that I made money while I was at this place and came back with more was likely a, a direct result to being so in line and so in tune with everything that was going on in terms of being in the zone. That was it. And being able to get yourself to that place, things just seem to work out. Banana trees were all around. And again, we would just get fruit right from the yard. I mean, you, you had unlimited mangoes coming out of that yard. This was a neighbor's puppy. And this little dude just looked like he was stoned every single picture that you can take of him. But he was a cute little dude and it was fun to watch him interact with Baloo. It was pretty much a bigger version and kind of gets shown the ropes roughed around a little bit, but that's what it's like on the street. So for story time here at the end, I've told this story before, but if there's, if there's a resume of my life or a life resume and what I'm good at, what I would list, it would be technical analysis, farming, rock hopping, and breaking up dog fights would be, and ping pong, ping pong's up there. But breaking up dog fights is something I've done a lot. When I was on the farm in Maine, we had two female dogs that were not spayed. And so they, they did not accept, I mean, most times with animals, they accept their pecking order instantly. It gets determined very quickly and that's that. But when there's two animals that do not accept it, there is constant posturing and battle for that top spot. And we had this dog who was a, we had two Australian shepherds and one of them would just herd the other one and just walk straight behind it and literally be right on its back legs wherever we went. And every now and again, the one who was getting followed would just get fed up and say, nope, we're, this is going down right now. And they would go at it and draw blood. And, you know, there were times where I would have each of them in a headlock and they would still get out and go after each other. And it never got to the point where they would bite us. So I was never, you know, scared of that, but they were intense. So in this instance, we were in the water one evening, just like this. And Baloo and Cowboy were out and we didn't have her collar on, which was not good. But Baloo and Cowboy were on the ocean or on the, the beach by the ocean. They didn't really like coming in. So they would hang out and wait for us to come out. And these four big dogs that looked like they just came off a Siberian mountain came out of the woods and they were fine. They were just walking along and they walked over and we left the water to go say what's up to them. They looked like some really cool dogs. I don't know what breeds they were. They were giant and fluffy and probably very hot in Costa Rica, but there were no red flags. I have a, a very good sense of reading animal body language through my experiences on farms and things like that. And there was, there was no red flags and out of nowhere, one of them, just snapped and got Baloo on her back real quick and had her jaws around Baloo's neck. And so I was standing right there and instantly ran as fast as I could straight up to her. And that's the kind of thing where you don't even think about it. It's just adrenaline, instant reaction. And threw all my body weight into the dog and, and nailed my knees into its, its back hind legs, pretty much into its butt. And that surprised the dog a lot. And so it yelped and I you know, threw it to the side and then Baloo got up and Baloo tried to go after the dog. So I had to keep them separated. And then my buddy picked up Cowboy and said, heads up, Dan. And I looked up and there were four dogs just surrounding me, all staring at me like they were just waiting to determine what the next move was. And for a second, I thought it was about to be a battle royale. But fortunately, they stood down and their 
companion limped off. And I felt really bad because I definitely hurt that dog, but saw it the next couple of days and it was limping, but didn't break any bones or anything like that. So that was a big adrenaline rush and certainly a fun story to relive, but glad to protect Baloo. And after that, we had this bond where she knew I was alpha and she, there was this instant unspoken respect where it's like, I, it's hard to describe, but she knew I had her back and that was a fun moment. So that's it. USMJ video tomorrow. Although I guess this video is going to be at the end of the USMJ video too. So now we're getting all inception like have a good weekend. We'll see you next week.